Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're going to make this shattered glass effect in Cinema 4D. Okay, here we are in Cinema 4D. Let's set our scene up. We'll go HD 1920 by 1080 and we'll set the frame rate to 24 frames a second. Let's give ourselves a few more frames on the timeline. 120 should do us. And let's start by going up to MoGraph and selecting the Mo text. We'll center that up and get it into position. We'll get a camera in there and zero it out so we can be right in the center of the screen. Let's just pull back a bit and there we go. All right, now that that's all set up, we can turn that off and let's rename our Motex to text just in case we get confused. Now, it'd be pretty boring if we broke the word text, so let's think of something a little bit more creative to put in here. That'll do nicely. I'm not too sure about this Seaguo UI font, so we'll switch that out for our old friend Trajan or Trajan, whatever you want to say. Okay, you can just tweak it however you like. I might just make it a bit smaller and adjust that spacing a bit. We want to make it look like glass, so maybe we should make it a bit thinner as well. Let's set this to subdivided and zoom in for a better look. Let's pop open the caps tab and add some fillet caps to the front and back and we'll set them both to one centimeter. So that's got some nice beveled edges now. We want to create a single object and we'll set this to quadrangles so we've got some nice clean geometry to work with. All right, let's break some text. Let's go up here and grab a Voronoi fracture. Also, if you hold Alt while clicking, it should become the parent of your text. So we'll start by clicking on the Sources tab. And if we click on Point Generator, you'll see that 20 points have been generated on our text and that basically tells the fracture where to break. So let's come down here and make the point amount 12 and we'll turn on high quality to give it a bit more detail. And we actually want 12 points for each letter. So we're gonna turn on create points per object as well. Okay, let's make these cracks a little bit more visible. We'll come up to the object tab and in the offset fragments, we'll make that 0.3. Let's optimize and close holes as well, just to make sure we don't get any weird edges. Okay, let's turn on our camera and get it into position. When you're happy, just set a keyframe at the beginning and do a little zoom in the Z axis so we've got a nice little camera drift. Let's go into the curve editor for our camera animation and make sure the keyframes are set to linear. And now we'll have a nice little drift towards the text without any easing in or easing out. The next thing we wanna do is animate our shatter and we'll do that with a random effector and a push apart effector. So let's grab our fracture and we'll add a random effector first. So MoGraph, effector, random. And that's obviously way too much. We just wanna randomize the pieces a little bit just to make it look a little bit more organic. So let's bring all these values down and add a little tiny bit of rotation. If we go back to our fracture, you can see we can animate the effect of our random with this slider here. So at full random, we'll set a keyframe at the end and then we'll go back to the beginning and set that to zero. So it's a pretty subtle effect at the moment, but when we push these pieces apart, it should look a bit more interesting. Let's click on our fracture again and grab our old friend, the push apart effector. Again, the values are looking a bit too high here. So let's go into the effector and bring the radius down. We can animate that here with the strength slider. So let's go back to the start of the animation and set a keyframe and then to the end and we'll set that to three. And that's pretty much the gist of the animation on this one. You can use the same technique to fill the rest of the scene up with little shards of glass. To do that, let's first rename our push apart effector and our random effector because we only want them to affect our text. Then we'll duplicate our fracture and we'll delete the text out of there and let's rename it shards. For this, we're going to use a cube and when we apply it, if we hold Alt, it should become a child of our second fracture. Again, it's supposed to be a piece of glass, so let's make it nice and thin in the Z axis. And we'll give it some nice beveled edges by adding a fillet. Because we duplicated it, let's make sure the effectors that we created for the text aren't affecting this one as well. So let's delete them out of there and add a fresh random effector. So you probably noticed that nothing happened. That's just because we're working on the duplicate fracture that we animated. So if you click in there, you can see we just need to put this back up to 
Now we want a lot more shards than this, so let's go back to sources and we'll crank that point amount up to 147. Okay, let's start adjusting our new random effector until we get a result that we like. Something like this might do us for the last frame of the animation. Let's set a keyframe. Then we'll go back to the first frame and tweak these a little bit and set another keyframe. Again, we don't want any easing, so let's open up the curve editor and make these linear. So now we've got our shards slowly rotating as we come towards them. They're a bit too close to each other at the moment, so we just need to add another push apart effector. Let's click on our shards again, and as you can see, we only have the random effector in there now. We'll add one more push apart effector and bring the radius down to 34. And if we play that back, you'll probably notice something a little bit weird. Instead of pushing apart like you'd expect, we're getting this weird undulating on the shards. That's just because we've applied the push apart after the random. But if we just drag that down there, that should fix the problem. And there you go. That's pretty much the animation done for this one. If you want to tweak the position of the shards, you can come into here and change the seed value until you get something you like. So I'm just going to spend a few minutes tweaking this and I'll throw in some lights and I'll be right back. So here's what I ended up with. I just played with the seed values until the shards were a bit out of the way so you could read the text. I also ended up adding an extra fracture object. So we've got big and small shards just to add a bit of variation. And you can see here that they're just more cubes. My lighting setup is for Octane, but you could use the standard Cinema 4D render. It's just a simple free HDR from the internet. There'll be a link down below. And I've just got a black environment and a nice glass material applied to everything. So if we fire up Octane, you can see in the live viewer, everything's looking pretty cool. To make it a little bit more cinematic, we'll give it a bit of depth of field and we'll just put the aperture up to five centimeters and select a focus point. And there you go, we're all done. Don't forget you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.